Hello, my little ponies. I'm Starlight, and welcome once again to another storyteller. So gather around the fire, my little fillies. I'm going to tell you a story of when after the end of the world. That's right, it's a Fallout fan fiction. And so this one is called Little Flame. Please curl up, listen, and I will tell you the story of a little Pegasus who learns that even though one is small, a little flame can bright up a room. Hi, you don't know me. I'm just a little Pegasus. I live in Stable 100, which is a stable dedicated to learning and creating new medicine. I am the only Pegasus in Stable 100. Apparently, my great ancestor that first came in the Stable was pregnant, and why her filly was a unicorn, uh, her husband apparently was a pegasus and so at least that's how they explained it to me as to why I'm a pegasus. I don't know if I believe them or if they just decided to genetically mess up my genetics why my mom was pregnant with me. That's the kind of thing they do here in Stable 100. So yes, I am a pegasus underground in a stable where there is no place to fly except for in the apple orchard which I only get to do when I'm helping them pick apples from the tops of the tree. Why must we pick them? Because we're not allowed to buck the trees anymore due to the fact that several were broken after they got bucked and we can't afford to lose any of our food sources. So yes, now we have to pick them. But more importantly is who I am. You must think this is strange to me. I am Firefly. I have a yellowish mane and two different shades of yellow. I have a gray coat. No kidding, steel gray. And I have yellow eyes. My eyes weren't always yellow. You have to understand, being the only Pegasus, I'm the only guinea pig they really have to test things on for Pegasuses. Why we make medicine for Pegasus when I'm the only one in here is beyond me, considering I'm the only Pegasus to be born in the stable in like 500 years. So, yes. It's rare, and I get used as a guinea pig a lot. Uh, the main reason for this is, is that I still don't have a cutie mark. Yes, it's been over two years since most fillies have had their cutie marks. I've finished school, and seeing as I don't have a cutie mark, I got put in the category with those whose talents aren't considered useful. Mainly, guinea pigs. I get experimented on, and in return I get a room, food, and yeah. I also am allowed to help out, mainly for the fact that my brother's head of security, and he knows that I don't really like being locked up in experiments. Now, why am I talking to myself? Well. At this very moment, I am having my gr wings grown back. It hurts. A lot. Even with the maximum sedative they gave me, it feels like knives are jabbing into me. Why did they cut off my wings for them to grow back? For medicine. Apparently, they created medicine that allows for wings to grow back, to be even stronger, more resilient and to be allowed to fly faster. I'm just happy they tested this out on birds before they tested it out on me. Um, but it doesn't stop it from hurting. When they cut off my wings, it was 
the most excruciating thing I've ever felt. Even with the chemicals that burn my eyes, that turn them yellow, that actually, I can't even remember what it was supposed to do. Um, you know, or the serum that they gave me that was supposed to help make me stronger stopped me from growing so I'm still the size of a filly. I, this is still at the top of my list. Ugh, each feather growing feels like blades slicing, needles pricking. Ugh, it hurts so much. I, I, finally, after what seems like eternity, the pain starts to subside. My wings, which I notice are a bit bigger now, are fully grown back in. I can move them. They feel like my old wings, just a bit heavier. No, not heavier, more flexible would be it. They move in ways my old wings couldn't. And of course, they ask me to stretch them and move them in all different ways. And it's considered a success. Why they needed a serum to grow back wings is beyond my matter. But at this point, they lead me back to my medical bay. Yay. And inform me that they will be back tomorrow in order to perform some other tests on me to check my flight. Something of that sort most likely will involve them shoving me into the wind tunnel and having me fly at top speed, which is fine. It's the only place I can actually fly at my full speed. But I'm tired, and I want nothing more than to go see my brother. Luckily for me, sea shift's about to start. Why, you might ask, is it important to see my brother at sea shift? Well. Let me explain something. There was a problem a couple years back where there was overpopulation. There wasn't enough food. Many ponies died of lack of nutrition, even with the shots. And so we are limited to how many kids we can have. Matter of fact, um, it's very limited. You're allowed one to two children. If you're a scientist, you're allowed two children. If you're a regular worker, you're allowed one. If you're a guinea pig, the likeliness of you getting out of the lab enough to meet a partner is very rare. So most guinea pigs don't actually breed um, or have children because some of them lose the ability to have children from the experiments. But yeah, uh, I'm not actually supposed to leave. So big whoop. I take out my bobby pin and I unscrew the panel and I hot rod it so that way then the door opens. I then leisurely walk down the hallway. Nobody cares. After all, my brother's security. If security does see me, they will not take me back. It isn't until I actually decide to go back that I will be, well, will be going back, or until my brother really can't come up with any more ideas for me not to be in the medical way. So yes. Now, back to what I was saying. Um, well, ta shift A is usually for, well, women. Uh, this is time when uh, fillies go to school, um, and portraits are done and stuff. Um, this is when males and females are kept separate, except for couples that are already together. Um, but for the most part, yes, uh, they still have to work in separate er category areas, uh, separated. Um, and B shift is for people that are now allowed onto the breeding queue to 
well, work with males and females in order to help them find a viable candidate as a mate. In which case, then they are permitted, and if their mate choice is considered a viable candidate, you know, they do DNA tests and stuff to make sure that the child will be efficient, um, then they are permitted to have a child, in which case the implant which keeps the woman from having children is taken out. This only happens, of course, when there is an opening for a new filly or stallion. So uh, then there is the C, which is where my brother's on, and this is the one where people that already have kids or already have a mate are put there males and females are free to work together. This is, of course, at night, or what I assume is night. This is when most people in the stable are asleep anyways. So I'm just trotting down. Let Now that you know a little of that, let's understand why I am now trotting to security, even though I just escaped, to go see my brother. He is currently giving a speech to the newling about the magical releases of the handcuffs. And once he's done, he smiles and trots over to me. Why, hey there, Firefly. It's been a while. Well, I was regrowing my wings. Regrowing your wings? Why on earth would you do that? I don't know. It's what they decided to do. <laughs> my brother, who I love, he has watched way too many western movies because he literally talks with a drawl. I have yet to figure out if he does this on purpose or if it's because he has literally watched too many southern movies, western movies. So, let's continue onwards. What? Wait, what was he saying? I I'm sorry, what? Why, of course, dearling, I was talking about how we could use your help. There has been some problems with the uh, air supply. Something about too much OC or something, doctors complaining about it. So, I want you to go up and help the repair ponies so they don't have to keep climbing up and down those ladders to fix the filter. Do you think you could help out with that little sis? Of course. Anything for you, Wuna-chan. I love my big brother. He is wonderful. And he's the only one, and you might think it's strange of him for him to assign me a job when I just see him, but the only time we're legally allowed out of the testings when we're guinea pigs, is to help in things that need to be done. Not to say, as I said, it's for ponies that special talents aren't considered useful. So, let's say you're an artist pony. You might be commissioned to paint murals, but you would still have to do guinea pig shifts. So, by doing this, he's allowing me to legally be out. Without any work for me to do, he has to escort me back to being poked and prodded in the medical bay. While I'm not technically supposed to be on C-shift, it's not really bad considering that all of the ponies on C-shift are already married or have fillies, and so it's not that big of a deal. If I was on B sh if I came out during B shift, my brother would have to escort me right back. But for now, I am perfectly happy to fly off to go see Wrench. I like Wrench. She is awesome. She is what keeps the stable going. While the scientists say that they are the most important people in the stable, Wrench is definitely more important. She keeps the machines running, that keeps our food source going, which is basically just recycling everything. She is the one that keeps the air clean, well, not by herself, she has a whole team of fixer ponies, and so, yes, she is by far the most important one there. 
When I fly up to her, she is of course happy to see me. Why, well, hi there, Firefly. Haven't you been well? Not really. I had my wings grown back. Oh, is that so, sweetie? I'm so sorry. That must have been incredibly painful. Yes. Yes, it was. My brother said you needed help with the filters? Oh, yes. Um, please, just climb up there and we will be very happy if you could fly this new filter up to them. It's rather bulky. Problem matic too. Oh, no problem. I'll fly it up there right away. No biggie. So, as I am... F uh, it is heavy, though. Fortunately, my new wings are more powerful, although I would have been able to do it just as easily with my old wings. So I flap the wind through my feathers. I understand that outside Pegasus fly with the help of wind current. I've only felt this in the wind tunnel. Why we have a wind tunnel is still beyond me, but whatever. So I fly up and hand them the filter. <laughs> to my surprise, it's screwdriver and Rose. I'm surprised to see Rose there because she grows flowers for us to eat. Why she is working on a filter is beyond me. So I asked, Rose, what are you doing here? Why, hello there. Well, it's quite simple. <laughs> they wanted the new filter to have some scented scents in it. So I'm here to put in some perfume on the filter when it gets plugged in. Apparently they wanted sansanum and lavender. Something about it stimulating the mind. Seeing as this vent goes to the nursery, it's not that surprising. Oh, so I see. Very well. All right, well, here you go. I watch Rose as she gently puts on the scented powder stuff, and they screw it in. I help hold it up so they can concentrate more on attaching it rather than that. They swing the grill into place, and voila, my job is done. I then fly down their tools. So, do you need any help with anything else? As a matter of fact, I just might, sweetie. You know, you're so good with wires and technology. There's actually a file that I've been trying to get out of the main computer for ages. And it just has been so stubborn. Well, I don't know how I could help if you couldn't do it. Oh, honey, I just got it out thing that I need is for you to decrypt it. I know how good you are with that kind of thing. Oh, well, all right. Uh, let me see the file. She leads me to the maintenance area, which is the only place in which Piplups can't be found. Ironically, the area where the people that maintain the Piplups are the area where the finding feature in the Piplup is useless due to all the white noise. And she sits me in front of a computer. I look at it. Hmm. Simple data. Uh, as I decode it, something strikes me as wrong. The information doesn't make sense. I mean, it appears to be a message from the first Overmare, or from Stable Tech to the first Overmare. Apparently, our stable was an experiment to see if the smartest of pony kind could live peacefully and create better technology for the future. But it confuses me for one aspect. The stable's supposed to open. This surprises me. I mean, everybody knows you're born in the stable. 
you die in the stable. But this says the stable will open, but only when the code's given. When centers clearly state that life is inhabitable outside, well, how would we know that? It says we're supposed to send teams outside after the 500 year mark when the radiation level will be go down. But we've never sent out any teams, ever. I I'm confused and baffled. I print out what I found and give it to Wrench. She is shocked. But there's one thing on it that I did not print out. The access code. Now, this could be my chance. I could leave. I could fly in the air with wind under my wings and sun in my feathers. I could leave. I could never be experimented on again. I could fly. Not just puffing my wings in a straight line. I, I could do all those wonderful maneuvers that I've read about in the history books, like the Wonder Bolts. I could do barrel rolls and sonic brain booms and oh, so many other things. But I know I would, how could I do this? How could I leave? This is my home, my brother, my mother, my little sister who just had her cutie mark party. <laughs> I, I don't know. I could leave. I could look I could go and never look back. But if I leave, I will never be let back in. What if what I find out there is a desolate radiated place that's not even survivable? What if what if there's dancing monkeys? You'll never know if you don't try. But I can't. I know I can't. To leave is <sighs> it's dangerous. The code is ringing through my head and my thoughts are still spinning. When I walk back to where my brother lives, I won't go back to the medical wing. I will sleep in his room. His wife and him have an extra bedroom, seeing as they haven't had a filly yet, and the bed's small enough that I can easily sleep in it. <sighs> what to do? Should I go outside? Should I? Is it worth it? I just don't know. I will sleep on it, and in the morning I will make my decision. In the morning I wake up. And I feel better. I've decided that maybe I should wait. After all, if I get my cutie mark soon and it's good enough that maybe I won't have to be experimented on anymore. As I trot back, because my brother informs me that they want me for a test simulation, I walk in and they once again scowl at me because I'm not technically supposed to leave the medical bay. How am I supposed to get my cutie mark if I never leave? That is beyond inconceivable, but scientists are often short-sighted if it's not in their field. So I trot into the wind tester and they start at the air and I start flapping my wings and apparently I go quite fast. They're very happy. And I overhear one of them talking that if they cut off my wings again and give me more serum, my wings would come back even stronger. Another one said that the possibility of that is slim. And so I understand that even though it might take them a couple days, they're going to cut off my wings again just to test the experiment. Oh, no. 
May Celestia forgive me, but I'm not going through that again. No, because they'll just keep doing it. I've had this happen to me before, where they just keep doing an experiment over and over again to see if the effects get more and more. Having my wings cut off once was bad enough. I'm not letting it happen again. And I now know what I have to do. They'll never let me stop being a guinea pig. I'm the only Pegasus for them to test on. No. I'm not going to let this happen. No. No. I'm not going to forever be their guinea pig. It was foolish of me to think that even if I got my cutie mark in something important, even if it was nuclear physicists, they would still not let me go. I would always be their guinea pig, no matter what. As I trot out, they inform me that I should not leave, and I inform them that my brother has a task for me to perform so they can go shove it. And as I walk out, I go down the hallway. I trot towards the gate, the opposite direction of my brother, just quarters where I know he'll be. As I get towards the gate, there's nobody here. Nobody ever comes to this part of the stable. It's depressing. One more corner. There it is. The gate. And right next to it is the control panel. One so advanced even I couldn't hack it. But I don't need to. I walk up to it. And I dial the numbers. 22, 23, 44, 16. And it doesn't open. Then there's a screech and a loud rumble as the gates open. Then I hear a wail over the intercom. Stop! Stop! No pony leaves the stable! I don't listen. I've listened to that over mare my entire life. I trot out, turn around, and I watch the gates close. I'm out. And I am in blackness. There is nothing. Then, as I stumble around, terrified, I trip over something. And then I realize there are stairs. I must be underground. That's the only logical explanation. As I trot up the stairs, excited to see the sky, to feel the wind, I come out. I'm at the bottom of a mountain. I'm outside, but it's cloudy. There's nothing around me but desert. There's nothing but crumbled old buildings, and I'm terrified. What if I'm the only one out here? Well, I suppose I might starve to death before I die of loneliness. But luckily, I was smart enough to drop by and get some provisions, so I will at least be able to last a little while. So shakily, I open my wings. There's a warm sensation, a dull one, heat radiating from the clouds. It's dull. Not exactly warm, but there's a heat there. I feel the wind ruffle through my feathers. It's like nothing I ever imagined. The air isn't the sterilized smell that you get in the stable. And it's so quiet without the hum of the lights. It's beautiful, even in its desolateness. 
It's like nothing I've ever seen. Even in ruins, it has a sort of sterilized beauty. Like a blank canvas just waiting to have color added to it. Just a background. Just waiting to have buildings and gardens and whatever else old pon ponies used to build. I run and I open my wings wide, tilt them back. I am flying without a wind tunnel. Without having to hover, I can feel the wind run through my feathers like gentle caress. So my mother used to clean them only a thousand times better. It's like swimming, just so much more open without I can breathe. My Piplop, which I've never really paid much mind to, is clicking at me. I look down at it to find that it's telling me that there is a large amount of radiation and that I should continue onwards. Otherwise, while it's in the green, I really don't want to die of radiation poisoning. I decide to go higher. I break through the clouds and Dear Lord, does the f sun feel wonderful. It's like being wrapped in a warm blanket. As I'm flying, the clean air filling my lungs. Someone shoots at me. What? Like, something whizzes past me. I look back, and there's three to four ponies. Well, Pegasus? in scary black bug-like armor and they're firing at me. I fly as fast as I can. I go fly higher hoping I might lose them but I can't. No choice for it. I must go on a dive. I've never done a dive before. I've never had enough room but I fold my wings under me and I plummet. I go faster and faster. They're still catching me. I open my wings and I propel myself forward. And then, boom. It's like nothing I felt before. Just like elasticity has broken and I go fast. As I land on the ground, I look up and the clouds are gone trail of red and yellow light. The clouds are open. And then I hear a booming voice calling for a Fluttershy curtain, I think. And the Pegasus stopped following me to patch up it. I'm so sad. I mean, they're blacking up out the sunlight from the ground. I realize now that it's probably not the safest thing to go above the clouds. Clearly, those Pegasus are crazy. And so, I fly below the clouds, heading towards what looks to be a small town. Who knows? I might just find some ponies that I can talk with. Maybe they might know what's going on and explain to me what has happened since, well, I really don't know what's happened since the stables closed. Okay, my sweet little ponies, this is where I'll be ending it for now. We'll start off with, next time, with her in the town, and I hope you all join me. I know there wasn't much excitement in this one, but it's just building on her. I hope you'll learn to like Firefly as much as I do. Next time, we'll discuss her and some diamond dogs. So, please keep a lookout for the next installment of The Storyteller. Starlight Pony, shining out!